Hey class, continuing our foundation detail assignment. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do before I start putting in more detail items is I'm going to put in uh, several fill patterns or, or regions as they're called, filled regions. These are basically hatch patterns. So if we look at our final deliverable, um, the undisturbed soil underneath of our footing and the gravel base here uh, is what I'm talking about. I'm going to use filled regions to create these two things. So I'm going to go to region, filled region. That's on the annotate tab, by the way. Come over here and you look for earth or gravel and you don't see it. So what we need to do is edit type. We're going to duplicate and we're going to call this gravel. And we're going to look at the foreground fill pattern. And we're going to change that by clicking the ellipsis button. I'm going to look for a gravel pattern in here. And you can see that there, there's an earth pattern here, but there's no gravel. So what we have to do is we have to create a new pattern. Drafting patterns change their size depending upon the scale that you have set for your view. That's what we want to create. So we're going to have to create a new drafting pattern. So we click down here on the new drafting pattern button. And we're going to call this again gravel. And this looks like the AutoCAD drafting, um, or sorry, AutoCAD hatch pattern dialog. You can, you know, use parallel lines. You can do a cross hatch, which is two lines. You can change the spacing, the line angle for a very basic um, hatch. You can also click custom. Now, why it doesn't automatically load our options, I don't know. But what we have to do is we have to browse to a certain file. I've already gotten there, but let me go back. So you're going to want to go to your computer, the C drive, program files folder, Autodesk folder. You're going to find your current version of Revit, which for me is Revit 2019 currently. And that's what we're doing in lab. And this top folder here, ACAD interop, that's AutoCAD interoperability. We can uh, select this top pattern, acdb.pat. Hit open. And now we can see in here, we have a whole list of basically the same patterns that we have in AutoCAD. If you go down here, um, you know, these will look very familiar. You can also just search. And I know that it's called gravel, so we can click on gravel. Now this looks, the scale looks a little off here. We might change this to something like 0.25 we can always change that later I'm gonna hit OK and now we have this gravel pattern here now one thing I'm going to do I'm gonna edit that I must have had my caps lock on so I'm gonna call that gravel to be consistent and hit OK so now we can hit OK on our type and we can start drawing it so remember the method, we've now selected our type. Now we're going to come up to our options and our uh, contextual ribbon. We're going to look at our drawing method. And right now our style is thin lines. I want that to be invisible lines for most of my hatches. That way the, the hatch uh, boundary will not show up. It's just going to be an invisible line that we draw the hatch boundary with. So I'm going to start here. And our gravel is six inches deep. Come back over to the foundation wall around the haunch and come back to the beginning. Hit, hit the green check mark button and there's our gravel. The pattern is still a little um, big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that, edit my type, um, edit my gravel uh, drafting fill. The first time I did this, I left I let the scale at um, at one, and it looked fine. But for some reason, it's it's a lot different this time. I don't understand why it's different. So uh, let's go 0.125. Hit OK, OK, and OK, and that looks a lot better. And you can see that the edge of this, there's no line at the edge of this. That's exactly what I want. Now I also have a vapor barrier in here. So what I can do is if you select a pattern, you can then use the handles to move them around. 
So I want just a little gap between here. That gap would not actually exist. However, to show that we have a vapor barrier in there, I'm adding that gap. And what I'm going to do for that then is, again, I'm going to come up here to my Modify, go to my Line Work button, and I'm going to change these lines to medium lines. And then I'm going to create a detail line. I'm just going to draw a line that represents my uh, vapor barrier. So I'm going to come up here to uh, Annotate, Detail Line, and that's also going to be a medium line. And I'm just going to trace over the top edge of my hatch. You can actually see here that I can pull that back as well. And that looks pretty good. The hatch down here for the, the earth, there's already an earth hatch, so I'm not even going to go over that. Um, since you won't have to create a custom hatch, you can just load the earth hatch as a new type. While we're drawing these detail lines, we can come in here and do a detail line. We're going to do a, a wide line, and we're going to draw a gray line in. Just slope it. Doesn't really matter what the slope is, just show it that it slopes away. What does matter though is the height um, to grade from the top of the foundation. And you can see here that we have one foot. So now we can use, again, our dimensions to drive the locations of things. So I'm going to click here and then here. So now I can select this, and actually that I can't drive that because it's it's picking up the um, the insulation, not this. But uh, what I can do then is drive my insulation to be one foot down, and then I can simply move my my grade line somewhere like that. Now my insulation I can edit. So there's my grade line. I could also pull this out a little bit. So I might nudge. I'm just using my keyboard here to nudge the grade line down. Now again, this dimension is shown as below frost line. So what I can do is I can simply click on the four, double click, sorry. Oops. Try that again. Select it and then click on the four foot. Replace with text low frost line and that just replaces that text with or replaces that dimension with what I want to place there. I can do another detail component for my um, cement board so I'm going to find that gypsum wall board. Again you're not always going to use in these details the exact thing but you're just finding something that can represent um, that cement board and the gypsum wall board is perfectly fine so we select a half inch gypsum wall board and we can move that over or we can use our align tool to align that up now we can pull that up pull this down now these lines are very heavy um, so what I would like to do again is come in with my line work tool. I've actually placed a line work tool on my quick access bar because I use it a lot. And I'm going to change this line here to a medium line. And same with this line here if I could find it. It's not showing up. I think it may already be a medium line. But you see how it makes this line a medium line and I want that to be heavy. So now I have to go back to detail line, change back to a wide line and trace over that so that it indicates um, that we're cutting this. So let me redo that again. Y lines. I didn't get it in the right spot. I also, a lot of times while I'm drafting in a detail, I like to turn thin lines on. That's TL. And that way I can sort of see exactly where the edges of things are lining up. So for instance, this gray line is not even touching. We could fix that. Um, but you can see that, you know, this looks a little weird. My my um, expansion joint doesn't go to the top. But if you turn thin lines off, again, TL is the command. You can see that I've actually moved this down so that it doesn't 
uh, clip the the heavy line there. While we're talking about detail lines again, what I'm going to do is uh, change my line work of this line to invisible. And again, there's two lines here. There's the top of the footing and the bottom of the wall. So we have to click it twice. Now we can go back into detail line, which is DL. I like to use that shortcut. Go back to my wide line style and put these lines back in. Now I can draw that that key here. So what I'm going to do is go to a medium line and I'm just going to draw a two inch by four inch key. Now I didn't get that centered in centered up in there but now I can select these lines I can activate dimensions and I can bring this dimension over here I can bring this dimension over here I can see that I have four and a quarter and three and three quarters so if I simply make that four inches they're both four inches so now that's centered up so that's how I add the key just a series of um, the line work tool and the um, detail lines tool. Now I'm going to add my break lines so that's a detail component so annotate component come over here to my type selector it's all the way at the top break line I'm going to place one up here and you can rotate detail components by pressing the spacebar and place one right there then you can select them you can modify them. I usually like to bring them in tighter to what they're cutting so that I don't have this extraneous line sticking out. And there we go. So uh, we need some dimensions in here. I'm not going to go over all these dimensions because um, everyone knows how to make dimensions at this point. Um, the, the drain, we loaded that in uh, in a previous video so we can add that drain pipe here. That's a four inch diameter drain pipe and again you're you're going to basically place a bunch of detail components detail lines and filled regions to create this drawing uh, the next thing that we'll do is we'll we'll look at how to uh, manipulate the rebar um, detail components